your destiny. Elation and jubilation gamers from all around the world. I am Lucian and this is the World Gamer Show. After last checking all Mortal Kombat games on Game Boy Advance, we've now reached the year 2006 and 2007. Both the Sony PlayStation Portable and the Nintendo DS are out and battling each other for portable supremacy, and both have a Mortal Kombat game in their library. Mortal Kombat Unchained on the PSP and Ultimate Mortal Kombat on the DS. But which one is better? Is it worth playing them both or none? Well, let's find out. Just like I mentioned last time, because I wanted to give you a bit of light of hope uh, in that desolate darkness that was the MK Advance, it happened. The PSP was released in 2005, and there simply was nothing like that at the time. Nothing that advanced, and nothing could even remotely compare on a technical level. As a total muscle flex, developers and Sony agreed to bring many ports from the then newer PlayStation home console, the PS2, over to the PSP. So we got games like Prince of Persia Revelations, Midnight Club, and Mortal Kombat Unchained. Which is none other than Mortal Kombat Deception from the home consoles, with a new shiny name and lore characters. But before that, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a compilation released at the tail end of 2005, called Midway Arcade Treasures Extended Play, which includes a ton of arcade games from Midway, including the whole first trilogy of Mortal Kombat, with the first, second and third chapter completely playable in full in their arcade version. I'll be honest, I bought this collection because of the MK games. I had the PS2 version of uh, Midway Arcade Treasures 2, and that included MK2 and 3, but I was severely let down by the lack of the first one, which would have made the whole trilogy complete. Thankfully this was addressed in the PSP version, so for us, that means that we have one more way to bring Mortal Kombat on the go. Even though the emulation isn't exactly arcade perfect, with some noticeable input delay, and also the loading screens are so long. But that's what you get when you use UMDs. Oh, and there were some glitches too. So yeah, not a deal. But at least we got the first three Mortal Kombat games on the go. I'm still happy with that. Anyway, back to Unchained. So it's based on the home version Mortal Kombat Deception, which is well known among fans for being among the most content-rich games in the series, and really among any fighting game in general. It offered deep combat mechanics, full 3D movements, all of which was part of the MK revolution started with Deadly Alliance and more extra modes than you could shake a stick at, including chess combat and puzzle combat. So imagine everyone's surprise when Unchained released in 2006 and not only did include all of these extra modes, but there were also no cut whatsoever, all of the endings intact, all of the conquest adventure mode untouched and even more characters than the home console version including four from Deadly Alliance, Blaze, Frost, Kitana and Jax, and two from the GameCube release of Deception, Goron and Shao Kahn. And all these fighters are unlocked from the start, as it was the style at the time, as from 2005-ish, most of the game's re-release and ports were beginning to have all of their fighters unlocked from the start, which was a blessing in a way, so that you could start practice with your favorite character straight away. And in particular in MK Unchanged, this didn't hurt the sense of progression in the slightest, as this game still offers the players a ton of things to do and discover. For example, the fantastic Calpest mode comes back in all its glory, complete with all explorable worlds, houses and coin collecting, all spelled with K's of course, that made it such a standout mode in the original release. On top of that, as I mentioned, the minigames are here too, including the peculiar chess combat and puzzle combat. Chess Combat allows you to play a classic chess game, 
but you can assign each character to a role. As it's time two pawns meet, they fight it out to decide who stays and who's out. Uh, it's quite a neat take on the formula, I dig it. <laughs> Then we have the awesome puzzle combat, the MK take on the classic puzzle fighter from Capcom, but I will explain more about it later on. Because now I want to talk about the crypt. Oh my god, the crypt. It's so awesome to earn coins, with a K of course, and spend them all in the crypt to unlock photos, trailers, funny videos, and even more coins to keep them going. And I love it, and I can't stop unlocking things, it's addictive as all hell. I need help. Hi. I am Lucian, the world gamer, and I, I am a quick stop falling. I am a quick stop falling. I don't deserve your love. The most important thing is that the performance is also super stable. And the graphics downgrade is extremely minimal. It literally felt like a miracle that we finally got not only a good MK portable game, but in fact an excellent one. Albeit not a new dedicated episode, but a conversion, which was fine by me since the exception was one of the best in the series. So having it portable was awesome and still stands as one of the better games to show off what the PSP was capable of as early as the mid 2000s. <laughs> But what was happening on Nintendo's side in the meantime? Well, Nintendo released the DS a few months earlier than the PSP, still in 2005. And it was a global phenomenon. Yes, it crushed the PSP sales-wise, but honestly, they were two very different consoles with very different philosophies. The DS, while having a solid hardcore gaming library, was filled with shovelware and casual games for children, adults and families in general. Not really an ideal home for Mortal Kombat. But the DS was just too successful to be ignored. And it's not like MK didn't arrive on any Nintendo system before. So what to do? How could they bring MK to the DS? And that's when it hit them. Casual puzzle games are all the rage on the DS. And MK did have a puzzle game, as a mini game in Mortal Kombat Deception. So why not use that one? Puzzle Combat, as it was called, also had chibi characters, perfect for the Nintendo DS kids-oriented target. After all, Puzzle Combat was clearly inspired by Super Puzzle Fighter 2 Turbo, which was already strangely absent from the DS library, leaving the playground wide open for Mortal Kombat. But the offer would have been too stingy with just Puzzle Combat, at least for the price that Midway, the publisher, wanted to charge for. So why not pack Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 in that too? Now that's more like it. And it will be called Ultimate Mortal Kombat. MK Puzzle Kombat included. And so it was done. Ultimate MK was released on the DS in 2007. And it was actually pretty good. The version of UMK3 included here is very solid and basically arcade perfect in performance. Of course there was a downgrade in resolution but that's to be expected. But on the good side, you can even save all the hidden characters you unlock. Heck, you can even save each and every one of the treasures of Shao Kahn you get after beating the game. Which is awesome. So if you want to see the ultimate fatality demonstration, you no longer need to beat the game at the hardest difficulty each time. Because once you do it one time, it is saved in the cartridge's memory. Moreover, thanks to the dual screen, you get instant access to the move list during gameplay. And you can even choose in which screen to display the gameplay and in which one to have the move list. Aside from these extra options, this is the same Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 you know and love. Filled with more super moves, combos, fatalities than you can shake a stick at. So yeah, this is one of the best versions to have, especially thanks to its portability. <laughs> But the true star of the show, at least for me, is Puzzle Combat, which is also present in Unchained on the PSP. Puzzle Combat is by far the game I've sunk the most hours into playing this package, as it's damn addictive, and to have it on the go, it's fantastic. The rules are very similar to that of Puzzle Fighter, you try to arrange the falling blocks to create bigger combinations of the same color, and then wait for the special block 
or rather the MK circle, and place it in a way that it touches other blocks of the same color to make them disappear. The more chain reactions in a row you can cause, the more blocks you will send to your opponent's side. The first character to fill up their entire screen loses the battle. Breaking blocks will also fill the super meter so that your characters can perform their special skills that can either create obstacles for your opponents or have a more direct helpful effect on yourself. Some are more useful in certain situations so it is imperative to learn which characters has which skills and most importantly when to activate them. The only downside I've seen so far is that sometimes it seems like it takes an eternity for the special blocks to appear. So it seems like you can't uh, progress and free the screen as much as you like. But that might just be me. There's also a ton of characters to unlock too, and the secrets page in the options menu even gives you clues on how to unlock them. I'm actually very happy that Puzzle Combat could come out to both handheld consoles at the time, the PSP and the DS. As for Ultimate Mortal Kombat on the DS, it's a great package that makes the variety its strongest point. The only way this could have been better is if they put Mortal Kombat Trilogy instead of Ultimate MK3, but still, I can't complain. So I will stop doing that just about now. Overall, there isn't one that is better than the other. It's just two different games, two different philosophies. The DS game is more oriented towards uh, retro gamers and puzzle fanatics with a very good port of Ultimate MK3 bundled with the awesome puzzle combat. For those who actually wanted more of a home console experience on the go, Unchained on the PSP offered everything that the section offered on whole console and more. Both are great games, worth checking out even today. <laughs> But this is just one guy's opinion on the internet, and now I want to know yours. Let me know down in the comments which side are you on on this one. The DS or the PSP? Did you play any of these games back when they were released? Or do you plan to track them down now and give them a try? And join me next time as we take a look at MK on one of the most underrated portable gaming consoles, the PS Vita. Well, that really wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if so, feel free to support my channel by uppercutting this video with a big like and subscribe. I also want to thank you so much for watching this video to the end. It really means a lot to me that you chose to spend some of your precious time to watch it. I will be seeing you in my next one, but until then, stay safe, play safe world gamers.